Number one, that, that's called a wet return that has water. Two, you're not only factoring water inside the pipe, but you also, especially in the summertime, it's more humid in the, in the summertime humidity. It's just, it's just the nature of it being in the basement. Yeah. And that all plays a role into like oxidation, rust, you know, that accelerates the life expectancy of not even just the boiler or just uh, or the water heater. The water heater is because of water content, the water quality, the water quality on, on the water. Some places are harder than others. Yeah. That's just the mineral deposits and the calcium inside the tanks, so and that's why it ruins them. Tony said the inside of the boiler looks good. It's just had a lot of carbonization. Yes. So he that is definitely would play a factor into what what happened because that you could see all those little pivots, the shit that you see inside here. Yeah. That changes the whole characteristics of the fire. I mean, look at this. Look how bad this one is. So now gas is not necessarily just coming here. These are all you know caked up and. Yeah, he cleaned. Right he down. cleaned all this by hand. I mean, yeah. He was going in there with a with a small screwdriver, but all this pitting. Yes. That's what caused it. And over here, the gas, when it comes out here, it's going to, the, all this characteristics of the fire is going to change. Yeah. You know, gas is also coming out to the sides. This is designed by the engineer to give X amount of gas with X amount of oxygen. Yeah. So, this is what caused to, you know, cause it. We'll try to get it going for now, but definitely it's- I'm going to order tonight. Come on, you know, I'm not going to- You see, like this? And I've seen them even worse than this. I've seen them like they even corrode, eat up, so the gas will come pissing up to here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, this, this one's bad too, look. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, I see some of them even all corroded from over here. No, he brushed yeah. all this out. Yeah. I mean, Tony totally yeah, did it. Yeah, like, no, because I've been to a board, I went to a board last season, and had something like this, same exact thing. You see, this is the water. Right, right, exactly. That's what that is water, because water. So maybe there was a flood, fuck, I don't know. Because water would cause this too. If there was a flood or anything, or something, you know, it don't take much, and water just sits here, and it, plus it's humid. Right now, we want to get the uh, meter going. We just get, I want to pressure wash the board. I want to tell them to pressure wash this. All right. As much as it's possible, there's going to be some water here, so I'm going to tell them to move yeah, that we'll, to the side. Yeah, we'll get it. Just, and it's we'll just sweep it out. Whippa! This gets locked up, the water will come in. Now that water, you know that, that crazy Hurricane Ida? Yeah, yeah. Did you get any water inside here? I, I, I don't recall it, but you know, it could have been, it could come in and could dissipate. But right. as long as it comes in, it could, could Right, you know, it was a lot of that water, like, you know, because this is like a waterfall coming down here with that water we right. had. And I have two, I have two locations out there that have a drain. So this one, and there's one up there, but if they get clogged, you yeah. know, leaves come down and shit like that. This is gonna come right over this, you gotta see. It's gonna come right through there. And then this goes right into the boiler room. Correct. So that that could have done it. So yeah, I mean this not, but that's not from now. That's something that's been that's been like time. You yeah. know, what I mean you just didn't notice it until now. They finally said, you know what, enough is enough. Yeah. But that's not from not overnight. But that definitely doesn't help. You know, to come to, you know, especially the water that we have from that day. That was a lot of water. Yeah. That's what I was asking. That's just going to just help expedite the, the life expectancy of those burners or boiler anything. Because even look at here. Like, but that wasn't. Uh, like over here, that you know, you, you can tell this coloration. Like, see, this is called a wet return. Yeah. This is not too bad on here. If you start looking at certain areas, like it starts, you can see. And right now, it's like on those nipples, you can see they start to scale. Uh -huh. You can see the difference. And that's again, this is the nature of dealing with water, nature of dealing with you know humidity. It's just being in the basement. Yeah. You know, with that that pipe over there, I, I'm gonna show it to you again. But you definitely need sometimes so you wanna wanna, wanna replace that. It, it's work right now, but. It, <laughs> The worst things happen at the worst time, right? Of course. So right now we're cleaning the boiler. The boiler's carbonized. And the reason why it was carbonized is because the burners are not pivots. It just got corroded. It's just the nature of dealing with water, corrosion in the base, especially in the, in the base that has a lot of humidity. So unfortunately, it carbonized. So now we gotta clean it. You clean it out, yes, with brushes, but sometimes the brush cannot physically get into creases or areas that you just can't get in there, so we use a pressure washer to knock out all the soot or the carbonization as much as possible. And of course, the actual pressure washer has pressure behind it, so you actually get inside the heat exchanger and clean it the best you can because the brush is just not going to cut it. The brush is going to do most of it, but it's not going to do all of it. So we want to make sure it's clean so this doesn't happen again.
Man, this fire's filthy. Push it a little bit more on this side. Yeah, Alright, I'm gonna do a goes like this and this gotta go like this. That's why I was cleaning this way and this way. I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it on the bottom. <coughs> this got well done. As best you're gonna get because it's never gonna be all a thousand percent but you need to make sure that it's clear because if the passages are not clear it's gonna happen again. Our boiler. Brand new. He's gonna need drag green down. Wow. Let's put it to the screen inside. Okay, you change the battery, so. And these young cats who want to worry about getting their hands dirty, this is what the job entails. Get your hands dirty. I'm not telling you guys to put your hand in shit, but I'm just also old school. This is the way I was taught. I'm not, I'm not worried about fucking gloves right now. Yeah. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes, it, it, it's always recommended to use gloves, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. And two, every time I put gloves on, mm -hmm. They, send, they tend to like rip on me or either that or sometimes I can't grab certain things. So I'm just used to doing it the old fashioned way. But if you're afraid of this, do not get into this business. <laughs> this is what it tells to work with Louis the Boiler Man and work in the boiler room. This is not an easy job, nor is it a clean yeah, yeah, job. But if you're afraid of getting hands dirty, don't join. Don't get yourself involved in something you don't want to like or you don't like. But I will tell you one thing. This right here? Mmm, smells like money, Papa. If you can only smell, if you can only smell this through the camera, you'll say like, wow, this is a good job. Please well. Ooh. Ooh. How's it look? Yeah, man. That clicked on, you, you swapped that one out, right? Yep. I swapped it out right now. Okay. That, well, that's what protects you. That's a good thing. Yes. Because you have what's called a rollout. It's called a rollout switch because you actually had a physical rollout of a fire. And what, what that rollout switch is made of is just basically just lead, a little small piece of lead, it makes a connection. As soon as it feels a certain type of um, a temperature, right. you know, it's overheating and it's, you know, it's a lot of heat coming out from the front, it knows and it melts and it breaks the circuit, which then essentially shuts off your boiler and you're complaining there's no heat. Because if that's not there, you can number one, have a fire, or two, you can have carbon monoxide poisoning into your building. So that's the purpose of that rollout switch. Okay, you guys replugged in that. Yes, that was a spill there. switch. Yeah, that's the spill switch, switch is to protect you from your uh, chimney. So if you have a blockage, a dead bird, or any type of blockage in the chimney, again, same, same concept. It's based on temperature. So if the temperature you know, starts going higher and higher and it starts getting really hot to the point that it's overheating, it knows that something is wrong and that has a thermal disc inside that little switch and it just basically shuts it off. The difference between this one and that one, that has a manual reset. You can press it and reset it. Yeah. This one, when this goes bad. Can we, can can we check the damper? Because I think that had a problem too when, when, when you and I were talking about it. All right, I mean, we'll disconnect it, so we'll turn it on. Yeah, I jumped it right now, that's what it turned on. You maybe you have to raise it up a little bit. Oh. Yeah, that's it. Okay. <laughs> a little patient. <laughs> right now, so far, so good. There's, it's a burner, definitely, because you can see it on the bottom. When you check on these uh, burners on the last two or three, you can actually see gas, a fire coming up from the side. On the side. And they're not supposed to. 
Yeah. So yeah, these are all going to get replaced. Just I need a couple days to order it, and then I can. That's not a. That's not too difficult. I'll be no, this is easy. You just got to make sure it's off. Obviously, make sure it's cool. It's not hot. Yeah. <laughs> then just take this this plate here. Yeah. Take it off, and you can do what you got to do. You're good to go. I'll write you up too. How much it is to replace that? Because right now you're not using the board that much. It's not you're building so much pressure because. Even, even though it's cool, it's still relatively it's, it's mild out for us. Yeah. But when it starts getting to like the 30s, the 20s, and it starts pushing that steam, you don't want that to rupture on the thing that is really, really cold and there's water all over the floor. You can't turn the board on. Guys, do your maintenance. I cannot infest that anymore. I can't stress that anymore. I don't know what else to say. It's very important to do your maintenance and your service at least once a year because you don't want to have these problems because things happen on the worst time. Of course, happens to happen on the coldest day of the year or the beginning of the season when there's a cold and everybody's pitching complaining about heat. You don't want those headaches. But if you want to leave those headaches to me, no problem. I have no problem charging you guys and telling you, listen, I told you so. So guys, do your due diligence, but if you do have any questions or anything you need to ask me, by all means, you can always reach out to Louis the Board Man at where? 516-377-5200. Where I, I, I will make sure there's gifts if you come. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. you can, I'll bring that. you a gift, okay? You can't do anything, you have to give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> he got you here. This, I gotta say, man, you know what? It's number one, I wanna say thank you. That's of course, means a lot of to me. Of course. And two, listen, man, these are the customers that, you know what, like I was at a conversation with this, when this thing first happened last week. And, I, and you know, uh, us businessmen tend to want to go for more, but cater to what you guys have already, which is what this guy's been with me for years. So, this is the type of business that I want to be. I want to have people that have been with me for all these years and, you know, and support me through all these you know, years and also many years more to go. So, that means a lot more than me trying to look for the new business. Yeah, we all want new business, but with what's going on with the whole COVID situation, you know what? I much rather use and stick to my, what I know, to the customer that knows me and supports me. And that me, I think that makes more, a lot more sense. And that's how we're going to survive this whole COVID bullshit because, you know what? I'm not gonna look for new business when I can't even find the good help. But if I have good people that support me and they know my work and we have a relationship, that means 20 times more to get a new business. That's the best business because that's gonna keep me going for many more years to go. So for the bottom of my heart, I appreciate it. Of course, so thank you. All right, thank you. That. Okay. And we're gonna party! <laughs>